there has been a lot of speculation about this documentary leaving Everland and of the outrage this whole thing has caused discussions are hopping up left right and centre across the internet and basically I'm here to support Michael uh, because um, it's not that hard to connect to him because to connect you have to come through a pure heart and mind. He saw the world no other way. The thing is though, what's going on is quite a taboo subject because nobody wants to talk about it, well at least in my experience. Men don't want to talk about anything happening to a child. The thing is, if they get linked to child abuse, child molestation, they know it's one of the worst things ever to get involved in, which is why a lot of people don't or even want to have an opinion on this at all. But guess what? They all share one thing in common. They know how much of a awful, disgusting thing it is to be labelled as one. And what really makes me angry is when they don't research into it because of course they don't want to be linked to child anything. But this has happened to Michael Jackson. Never in a million years would he have thought he'd get linked to this at all. Never in a million years of caring for children all ages, cancer victims, would he have ever thought this would ever happen to him? Because guess what, once you get a label, even if you are innocent, even if courts have proven him not guilty over and over again, there is a percentage of the population who still believe he is guilty. And that really makes me angry because we've known him through his music, through his art. This is one of the worst things for a man to be accused of, especially when it is not true. And people, this is what I personally find quite heartbreaking. People are very sceptical and people choose to keep an open mind. But by choosing to keep an open mind, it means your mind can be swayed either way. And, and so therefore there is something about having an open mind that I don't like. But 
to really understand him, you have to connect with your inner child, which means purity of your own heart, feelings and mind. To make his mark on the world and with the and with this strong desire to make the world a pet place, he set up his own business. He he uh, employed over a hundred staff to work in his home. He wanted to make change. There's. So so much suffering in this world and he wanted to make a difference. He's helped thousands upon thousands of children trying to give them a better shot at a life. And if we are a fan of Michael Jackson you can see th through his work as an artist. You know, it's songs like Man in the Mirror, um, Heal the World, Earth. You get us, you get a sense of what he stands for kindness, compassion. There is a lot of warmth and depth to the king of pop. And we all have an emotional style, an emotional style of how we express ourselves towards other people and anybody who has watched my channel knows I study the Enneagram which is nine different personalities, nine different ways of looking at the world and we each have our own thoughts and beliefs and Michael Jackson is a type 4 with a 3 wing and if anybody needs help to be pointed in the right direction I can put some links down or I think what I will say is this. There are three main cores to the enneagram. You've, you, you have a head type which are fives, sevens and sixes. You have a cut type, which are eights, nines and ones. And you have a heart type, where it's twos, threes and fours, where they are motivated by feelings. Yes. There are some people who are highly sensitive and who hate things to her heart. Things that don't bother other people. Unfortunately, it bothers us a lot. And if you 
read up on a type 4 it basically tells you that in this subtype Michael is a 4 with a th 3 wing and because of his 3 wing he has a desire to help other people. He has a drive to make his mark to be original. And being unique was also important to him because if a song of his comes on, you know distinctively it's him with his howls and his hee hees he was a larger than life figure the figure we canted king of pop he was easily able to pick up on feelings of other people around him, making him highly empathetic, sensitive to suffering and to establish warm connections with people. which also meant he experienced feelings of his own at a deep level. Basically, in my day at school, there was a kid who, if you were upset, he was upset, yeah? And he was, he was so so lovely he was so amazing because he would in his own way try and take on your pain and he would want to make it better he would he would want to love you better which is exactly like Michael Jackson um he, and you know we kills him it's devastating when he reads these upsetting stories in the newspapers about him beauty sabo pain all these things really touches him and he's he was always constantly trying to make the world a better place. These actions of improper part on his part did not align in with his purpose in life. At every opportunity, every interview, view that he ever did every horrifying nightmare that he has been through he has cooperated with authorities he has handled himself with maturity over his emotions um and his and he has never once thrown himself into a rage because there are a lot of things that people have done to him to upset the guy. He was a victim. He was a victim of police brutality. He fell for manipulation and 
with people labelling him at every opportunity. That, and if you're the type of person who cares, who actually gives a stuff, you take other people's crap, her heart, you do, and it harness to God kills you that what everybody is telling you this this is what they think of you and it's not nice it's soul crushing people have completely the wrong idea he suffered with depression And I don't know how he managed to get up every morning. As he possesses childlike qualities and to emotionally connect with people, he was a child's best friend. Because when a child is hurting, it's breaking his heart. And because of this, a desire to look after them in a loving, kind, sensitive way. That is exactly what he did. He put them on pro. Rams, he put them on a mental program. See, I know he compens compensates. He has openly admitted in an interview with Opera that he compensates for what he didn't have as a child growing up but I think he compensates in lots of different ways um it's I mean I had this conversation uh, with my husband a couple of days ago and he actually said he had a monkey I'm like oh yeah and I thought that was cute, you know. Um, and then I reminded my husband that um, Ross had one in in uh, in Friends, and I'm like. And then I went away, and I thought about it, and I thought, well. Consider what happened to Ross. He was in a long term marriage. His wife had left him to become a lesbian and he was all alone. And I think Michael struggled with only Enos. He had this big house. He lived by himself for a long time and he even mentioned in an interview that he wouldn't feel his life was complete if he didn't settle down with someone that he loved and had kids. And he was constantly looking for the one. He was constantly, you know, and in the meantime, he compensated for the loss. With which I can, unders can understand, and my husband can also understand. 
um, he told me when he was a lot younger that he thought he would never meet anybody and he wanted a girlfriend and it might seem extreme but his emotions got the better of him and he smashed up his room and I know when I was younger as a teenager I would cry I would cry because I thought I would never meet somebody who would love me make me his world and really care about me We all feel it, we all do, we've all been there, so I'd like to think we can show the guy, Michael Cax, and a bit of compassion in instead of judging him. Um, he was also emotionally ready to become a dad because if you th think about um, what he tells us, he was hooking the kids in at night, reading them a bedtime story. So, Again, he's compensating for what he feels he hasn't caught. Um, you know, and, and the feelings that go through you when you are ready to become a parent. And um, when, in this documentary, that it was revealed that some boys slept in his bed, a lot of people didn't like that at all and they wanted an investigation done. But see, the thing is, this is where my personality and his differ. Whereas I'd and I'm a type three with a two wing, I'd maybe do something that was subjected to ridicule and be absolutely mortified. I'd change and become what is more socially acceptable so even though I understand him completely I'd get to the point where I'd learn these are the things what not to do these are the things that will make me me stand out to be not not right so i wouldn't do them in fear of being judged because nobody wants to think or other people to think of them as weird and not right and all this business, but because he's a type four, he'd want to strongly express himself. Almost to a point of not ending over to what is socially acceptable. Um, and um, maybe this is why a lot of people are describing him as weird and maybe there should have been somewhere some kind of pound riz it was just like he wanted with the 
paparazzi as he explained to Barbara Walters this is the time for this and this is what you should not do somebody should have told those children just like he says stop this person deserves their privacy the star deserves his space where he turns the light off ching, <laughs> puts on his pajamas and goes to bed this is how you teach kids what is acceptable to do and what is not but let's re reverse that and see Michael's point here if a child came to him in distress woke up with bad dreams or woke up with chest pains because don't forget they were ill how could he explain that the child couldn't come in his bed when the child wanted him how do you think Michael who as he says sees the face of God in children was going to say no if child came to him who wanted comforting who was upset Michael Jackson would do anything he could to make the situation better if they wanted his bed he'd give it up and take the floor and then of course that kid would feel bad because they are putting their hero Michael Jackson out and Michael he saw it as the loving thing to do to give up his bed for the child like a self-sacrifice what was he gonna do sleep in a queen size bed when it was clear to him that child needed or would have benefited from it more and the kids adored him however there were going to be times when he needed his bed and there's kids in it as he says nature takes its course on his body he, and it, it, even though he remains Peter Pan at heart so as he is getting on he will need his bed for his back his neck his posture and I feel that he rationalised it out so much in his head because he says if you're going to be a paedophile, if you're going to be Jack the Ripper, if you're going to be a murderer, it's not a good idea. And because you can rationalise any, anything out in your head, because of him, he's not going to do anything to a child. He's not going to see himself as doing anything wrong. So then, the more he tells himself he's not doing anything wrong, it becomes acceptable something clicks in your head which tells you yes this is okay 
And what is really annoying, what is really annoying is when interviewers ask these indirect questions to Michael, such as, do you think it's acceptable to sh share your bed? Well, he's got to the point where the answer, answer is yes. To me, one thing I will agree with, it is the most loving, loving thing to do, to share your bed with someone. But for me, that would be my husband or any any kids I have or my odd children because you know uh, when I'm s sleeping over at my mate's house they come in and they start jumping up and down and all this business so and and that is how it was for him for children who weren't related it was a it was a lovely enjoyable moment um but again he saw himself as a kid so he was very child like and therefore he cut through them what he never had so he was he was almost living his life through them See, the thing is, the more I think about this, and this is what I think is happening, I don't think Michael Jackson wanted to leave them to cry or get upset and by them all being together in a two-story bedroom they they like provided each other with comfort and love and that nurturing pond because I don't think he wanted to be alone I don't think he wanted to be alone. And in life, you need people to validate you. So he had the comfort of boys around him. And as long as he and as long as he was needed and these kids were star star but who as he was their hero it made him feel better because it's a basic human need to be wanted, to feel needed, and to feel loved. Don't forget, he was always searching his whole life or the one. So instead of asking these in direct questions to whom Michael what they sh should tell him is what they think I think it's wrong I don't like it I am uncomfortable maybe I don't know if things were expressed like that 
for him because he always respected people. He always handled people all with respect. So um, maybe if they hold him, we I don't like it. I would rather you didn't if my child is ill I'd rather you called me he probably I think he'd probably probably do that and where and wherever Michael Jackson went all the boys wanted to be with him and even though the world sees Michael Jackson as a man giving him the king the king of pop title he he was incredibly cold like and he had a ex to him that we never really knew about I don't know if every child feels the same, but I had a hard time growing up and making that shift into adulthood because I didn't want to grow up. I wanted to be that kid, that girl who never grew up. And the thing is, when the world is changing and people you know are changing and you're told to stop pulling holdish pranks because you are now in an adult's body, but to you, everything is all about fun and games, you, you actually feel even more isolated that people just don't under, under, understand you. So I think for that reason it is very hard for people to look at Michael and think of him as childlike especially when he is known to the world as the king of pop people never said he was a boy of pop that would never have caught on the thing is with Michael he always had the potential to engage especially when down and depressed who engaged deeply in his head for a great deal of time where everything was like a bottomless pit of emotions especially when he had problems that the media and the tabloids created for him and he suffered with depression so it really bothers me when people say he wasn't in his right mind. To connect with him here is, and it could mean different things to different people, but it's like when you pick up a book or um, if you are a songwriter, how you can get lost into it and get sucked into that world. It's their method of escapism. That was his. In life, we all have our deteriorations styles based on our personalities and what we do when we act out on when in pain mentally and physically 
Hermine. Hermine's on if we are going to fall down that path or or build ourselves back up again. People don't get it though. Unless you are of a singular mind or a thought patterned person. I try not to judge. I try to understand accepting that all people are different. I also try not to be morbid. I am a positive person. If you look at the rest of uh, the work that I do on my channel, or sometimes I think about what it's going to be like for me when I'm when I reach my sixties, because as you get older, you are more susceptible to things that ha happen, you know, um, cancer, touch wood, hopefully I don't get that, um, or I think I, it's a possibility I could have, um, dementia, it's, you know, it's where you go into your own world and it's upsetting for all the people around you but it's a lot easier on you as a person because you are lost in your own world where you're happy one moment maybe angry another but um you know and i feel like who understands it but um I I have been known personally to find letting go of my past hurts hard, but I think I do. What I do is I try and meet those needs now because. When you can't get them met as a child, you need to... See, this is the thing with Michael. You need to be your own hero. You need to take yourself back again, time and time again. And I think he did. But it was very hard for him when the whole world is shouting pedo and, and ridiculing him at every given moment. People were very cruel to him, people were very unkind and it was never true. If a person told me someone was a f was a freak, I'd roll my eyes, give a snort of derision, and go, yeah, right. Knowing fully well that they don't get that other person's behaviour because they don't know them. And I guess that's true, but I'd feel a closeness to that person because I know what it's like to be given an unfair label and then you have to walk around carrying that label others have put on to you like for me personally with my stammering I was the only kid in in the school who the whole school knew I had a stammer, a 
Yes. Dama that was put on by bullying. And I hated others for doing this to me. Because I believed if I wasn't subjected to getting bullied every day, every day, that this wouldn't have happened to me. Sometimes I get asked about it and I wouldn't mind talking about it if they really wanted to know. But when I was teased, mocked, ridiculed, back then the depths of how much I was hurting was unbelievable. If someone persisted and said, but he's weird, I'd go, well, I'm different in my own way, so why should I judge him? And what I'd also be thinking is, in fact, you shouldn't either. Because right now that person will be coming across to me as cruel. If someone said to me now he's a wacko, I'd go, fuck off, he's got feelings. I might not swear openly to them, but that is what I would be thinking. The thing is, with me, I treat people the way I'd want to be treated with kindness, compassion, because I believe we should be kind. We should watch what we say. We should be tactful and sensitive when it comes to people's feelings. But this is what I think. Other people do not. All of what I have just come out with is a reflection of me and my opinions. And I judge other people on what they should do based on my beliefs. But how I think other people should be, they are not. And it's a shock to realise when you realise that we are different people and different people do and act all kinds of crap that you wouldn't do. But... This is how I think I should behave. This is how I think I should treat other people. And when s someone says something that is so cruel towards another person and name, I know I'd never call them. I start thinking that they obviously aren't nice. And at times, what people say is not just cruel, it's rude. Intended to cause offence and blatantly disrespecting the other person. I just think, how can you f throw words around like he's a monster animal when you don't know? It is like one of the most hushed homes around the internet because nobody really wants to discuss this. And it is out of fear as nobody wants to bring attention to it. But it has automatically been, ass been assumed if a child as it's true they get believed because people don't think children can lie they look at them and see innocent faces 
There, okay. The, there is obviously a majority of children who have been at some stage in the lives being taken advantage of in such horrible ways in some way and I've got to say my my own heart breaks for them and their pain and the things they must have gone through but what really makes me angry is when you have false claims of two people looking as sh shifty as hell trying to get real victims to tap into their feelings so I'm aware this is going to bring up a lot of emotions for a lot of different people the thing is viewers are connecting with something very dangerous and far from the truth so they will be feeling it when it's just not real it is a fantasy with two boys having big imaginations and this could ruin opera's credibility when when she has built so hard to make her show the success that it is I don't know if opera's been set up but she is that opera auntie of the nation and a lot of people will believe her because usually she acts very real honest authentic people and generally you think of opera as the voice of reason of understanding and truth or I'd think having had many, many life coaches on her show, she'd be able to see f through those boys when it gets out and it's proven to be all lies because the truth will come out. As these these boys can't even get their dates right because a Michael Jackson bought the Neverland Valley Ranch in 1987, and the allegations from the first child, Avin, began in 1993, where Wade was also around at the time where when questioned at Michael Jackson up completely saying how kind he is and even when Wade made his case Wade's mother contradicts her son over his claims and when this gets blown out of the water and it will I believe opera will make a play going. I was unknowingly set up. I was used, taken advantage of. My audience was being mani manipulated. I thought the boy's pain was real. I don't even know what I was thinking. And I'm actually going to go with the word bullshit because she would have not have got to be where she is today 
without being trained over the years by the best of many therapists and life coaches on her show to, to, to spot, spot manipulation tactics, haters, fake people, differentiating what is fact from fiction. So when that happens to her career, she is going to be fast tracking as much as she can to get her credibility back. Where Michael was targeted and his generosity and hospitality was taken advantage of and that maybe she should have believed him. Any time Michael was ever in an interview, there were people grilling him, outing him, making him out to be something he's not, piling on pressure, really sort of coding him. And he never contradicted anything he said, he'd ever said. Wade, on the other hand, was different and justice prevailed, clearing Michael Jackson of all charges made against him. The thing is, though, anyone who has ever worked with children, especially any men, has been targeted if they have had a business where children were around and I'm sh sure there was no way in a million years would Michael think he would be accused because he, he knew he was a, nothing like that. But at that point in his career, he was so big, he was huge, worth millions of dollars. And people saw it as a way to extort money out of him. Which not only makes me pissed off, I think it shows people up for the type of people that they are. And Michael, if he could, would have helped anyone out in some way. Because with a celebrity's packing, they can get many things started and set up in terms of helping others. I strongly believe he would have done if someone or a group of people were in need. He came to a person's school, which I've heard across the r radio. He didn't have to, but he did. That is who he is. If we look back at interviews, you see his face glowing with that innocence. Why? He had purity of heart and mind. You see how a smile lights up his face and you could feel his joy and happiness. You look up any body language expert and get them to break it down for you. They and they will tell you how it is. He was very easy to read, and equally, you you could feel his pain and sadness. You would hear it in his voice, the pained way he would look, it's the way a child would look when they are in pain, because he doesn't hide it. He's never worked up a mask to um, present to the outside world 
other than what you see on stage and when questions were so raw the way he'd cover his face with his hands and then he would tell you for how it is or what exactly happened he it's like you'd be experiencing and going through the emotions with him the hurt we Past anger, devastation, even on stage when something pissed him off, he'd sing what he was thinking out loud and forget his words for a moment. And it was funny, but he couldn't do that if he was neither real or authentic. There were no sides to him. And what you saw, you actually caught. As I've said, truly connect with him. You have to come at him through a pure heart and mind. Not one who sexualizes everything or one who has a sceptical or wary nature approach to life. He saw the best. He saw the best in people, not the worst. And sceptical people don't see the best in others. They look for hidden motives. And Michael Jackson never had that wary nature even even though he tells us he was more cautious each time and preventions were actually made from his workers and people that worked for him let's Put it this way you either see the best in people or you have a wary approach to dealing with others and these are two completely different minds to have and this was how his kindness was easily manipulated and used against him although i must admit his niece gives out a valid point. Wade was incredibly close to Michael and a lot of people, even kids, suffer with jealousy. So when a new child came along who needed a bit of love and support, Wade would have felt pushed to one side because now Michael would be attending to somebody else and he wouldn't like it the stupid thing is I get jealousy a, a, a little bit as a child if Michael Jackson was giving me fuss and attention and it stopped and I felt I had a special connection with him and then the attention was on another person it is very very hard not to get into a jealous rage and the th and the thing is with jealousy it cuts deep it wounds deep when you act when you act out on jealousy, it's, how, how can I put this, it's, it's, it's like a rot, it's like a rot in 
you that he opens and widens and it twists and it turns until you do something completely outrageous. A lot of careless people that I've come across, that I've known about, they can't handle feeling careless. They can't handle feeling in adequate and guess what they do they do things they honest to god do things you can't feel sympathetic to a jealous person for very long because they are they do things to sabotage other people because they can't handle it and if you go so beside yourself you stop at nothing to get what you want and Mike Jackson's niece has openly admitted that way because she actually hated him for nine ten years years would be this type of a person to go to these types of lengths to get what he wants and this wasn't a case where his parents had power over him no way I don't believe that for once Second, and if your child was actually abused, you wouldn't just settle for money. You wouldn't be paid off if a person had hurt or done something to your child. Well, why would you accept money? Which is, is it, which is exactly my point for that first case. If it was true and you believed it was, you'd want to see justice done. It is really setting for Michael facing situation after situation where his motives are, are constantly being questioned it's so crushing for God's sakes his capableness to do right kind loving thing by children and then having to suffer even he knew at the age of 40, just before all these allegations began, if you hear a lie often enough, you start to believe it's true. And I'm sure we can all connect to a time where at some point in our lives we've helped people out and we've just not got it back and how angry that makes us feel and how hurt we f feel or we are kind to people who have, who have then just gone and stabbed the knife in us these days although i believe deep down in people there is some goodness but that it's masked with a lot of flaws and selfishness because it's all a me first attitude and when I find someone who has none of these things Things, who is a kind, decent, 
genuine person. I know. Michael was a good leader. He did a lot of good things in characters around the world and all these other things that he received awards over. And if he spreads this much good out there, helping people, how people can take and sue him makes me feel sick. But people feel they have to take people in power down. It's, it's, it's because everyone's competing for power. And Michael Jackson was in a position of power. He really was empowering to listen to. Everland wasn't just for him. He gave children, many children, a chance at a better life. And I know that a lot of people tend to go, are you one of his godly worshippers? And all this business. But even in his 30s, he said this was his philosophy. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. He then goes on to say, yeah, well, people don't look at themselves, honestly. They don't look at themselves and put their finger at them. It's always the other guy's fault. And when, me personally, I hear someone, you know, coming out with these kinds of things, they have a lot of my respect and admiration because they are going th through changes and are also in the developmental process of their life where they are aiming and striving to become more of who they are and let's face it we all gravitate to people these kinds of people more even even though people gain their own insight and knowledge as they age in life and have their field of expertise not a lot of people focus on the true meaning of life and it's beautiful to hear another person talk like that sure you can always learn things from different people or you can have the most profound conversations with these people who are on this path And if I could have one last chance to, to actually talk to him, that is what I'd love to do. It's because of him doing such creative work, not just through his music, but like as he says, from 30 years old, he's interested in the human Hame the rain because he never once retaliated or acted out in a temper to a lot of things he's been put th through. If you ever asked him if he got angry, because it's a lot for any man to go th through. Don't forget when his wife was giving birth at the hospital. There were helicopters flying above him and, he, and the hospital turned around and said 
Michael, we've had every kind of s s celebrity here, and it's yeah. never been like this. It's unbelievable.